Hey everybody and welcome to another tutorial brought to you by the Minecrafters. I am Captain Jack and today we are going to be covering the rolling machine and railcraft tanks. Alright, first we're going to start with the rolling machine. The rolling machine is a machine of many uses. They are to make iron plates, steel plates, which we'll be using in this tutorial. You can uh, use this machine to make a bunch of different kind of rails. And you can use it to make fence. Um, if you have GregTech installed, you can make iridium alloy ingots. And uh, you can also make GregTech's heating coils that you'll need for um, their version of the industrial blast furnace. Okay, let's go ahead and check out how to make this rolling machine. You're going to need a crafting table in the center surrounded by four pistons and four iron ingots. So it's a fairly simple machine to make. You can make it pretty early on. This machine is going to need MJ to power it. And I've used an engine from this mod. It's called the Hobbyist Steam Engine. I will go into that in a couple more episodes, I believe. Um, but let's take a look at the GUI inside of here. When it is empty, and I will go ahead and take these out, um, when it's empty, you have an inventory over here that looks like a, a crafting table grid. You have a spot here, and then you have a final product spot over here, and you can click recipes here. So uh, there's a standard rail recipe. Um, you can make rebar. Um, there is the steel plate recipes. There's some fencing recipes. There's your copper nickel heating coil recipes, and last but definitely not least, the iridium alloy ingot you can run through this machine. So it's a machine of, of many uses, um, but mainly what we're going to be using it for today is to make plates. Now, this um, is kind of, uh, it works like a work table, and I'm sure it works like other blocks that I just can't think of right now, um, but it's fairly simple. Basically, you put your pattern in here. Um, and to make some steel plates, it's going to take four steel ingots. And uh, the same thing goes for iron, for, for uh, iron ingots. In a pattern just like this, it's going to make you some steel plate. And it doesn't matter if they're in one corner or the other, really, as long as they're um, four right here in a box like this. If you don't have enough, or if the machine... Um, Let's take a look at this this one right here. If you only have enough resources to craft one or more of your pattern, the machine <laughs> the machine stop crafting. Okay, the machine stops crafting. Um, clicking the target pattern icon in the GUI will force it to use up the resources and craft one last time. So you can kind of see that happening here. Um, these aren't fake. You can pull them out. They're actual resources. They're not placeholders. And so it's going to give me the option to um, click to craft. And uh, that's just the pattern that appears that the machine will make. Um, that's not actually real. I can't drag that out of there. But if I go ahead and click on it, it's going to consume power, which the machine needs. And it's going to craft me my steel plate. And this little um, low-tech 1.6 MJ per tick engine is going to crank this rolling machine back up. Okay. Um, so it's a fairly simple machine to use. Um, you could probably crank it up with a clockwork engine and use um, the most low-tech power on Earth to power this thing. So it's not really a big deal to get power to it. Um, but what you do have to remember is that it's going to slowly consume power even when it's idle. So you see I have this uh, panel here telling me that its energy um, is 499, 498 out of 500. And it's never actually all the way full. And you can see that happening right inside here that it's ticking up and down and actually gets to 197 there. Um, and this is not a bug. It's supposed to happen. Um, it consumes a, a 1 MJ every couple ticks or so. So keep that in mind. You don't want this thing um, draining your power if you don't have much power to begin with. Um, so just go ahead and feel free to disconnect it or stop the machine from sucking your power. Now, there's not really too much you need to know about this machine, just that it's going to be very important um, when we get to the next phase of our tutorial here. Um, the rolling machine can be automated, and um, it, it's, fairly, it's a fairly efficient machine, so automating it is not really necessary. It's fairly difficult with um, other mods besides applied energistics, so again, I'll just stick with that one. Um, the top will input um, the components for the side here. Now, I encountered a really weird problem with this. It's almost a build craft pipe-esque problem. Um, that stuff starts flying out if it's not properly configured. Um, but basically what you can do is you can set a, a precision import export bus. Um, it could probably be a basic one too. It doesn't really matter, I don't think. And you can just put your iron in there. 
And what it's going to do is it's going to go in kind of a round robin fashion and make sure it's even on all sides. And it's going to fill up the rolling machine um, with all the iron you'll need. And I can change this to move stacks of items to fill this thing up really quick, just like that. Okay, so it's pretty easy to get this stuff into the rolling machine. And then I just have a precision import bus taking out the final product, which is the iron plate, and sucking it into my system over here. Okay, so it's making me iron plate. There we go. Consumed some of that. Brought it over here. Very good. Now... Let's say, let's change this to move single items and stacks. I'm going to take, um, whoa, move single items. There we go. I'm going to take this out. I'm going to take all these out of here. And um, there we go. You can kind of see the problem happening. But if you have this thing exporting um, into the machine when it has no pattern set, I have magnet mode on, so all these things are, are dancing to me, you are going to create a problem. And if this is not remedied ASAP, you're going to create some serious problems if you're on a server, okay? So just be really careful um, and make sure there is always a pattern inside your rolling machine before you go ahead and set it up with applied energistics. All right, so once we have a bunch of these iron plates, we're going to go ahead and take them out of our system. We're going to throw this iron back into the system. What do we do with iron plates? Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We're going to make a bunch of iron and steel tanks. And uh, for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to kind of stick with the iron tanks. Um, we'll talk about steel tanks um, in passing. It's They just hold more. Um, fairly simple. Let's find out how to make these things first. Okay, There's a bunch of different blocks that uh, you're going to need to uh, construct one of these, these tanks. Uh, three to be exact. Um, you're going to need... Uh, for an iron tank, you're going to need an iron tank valve, um, two actually. You're going to need some iron tank gauges and a bunch of iron tank wall. Okay, Iron tank wall is just made by putting four iron plate in a shapeless crafting. Iron tank gauge, just like this, fairly simple. And an iron tank valve is going to take some iron bars and it's going to give you eight of these. Okay, Eight iron tank valves, eight iron tank gauges. And it's going to give you eight iron tank walls. So for every four iron, you're going to get eight. So it's really not that bad of a ratio. Um, so don't be too concerned that your massive block, blocky, uh, multi-block uh, tank there is going to suck up all of your iron. It's really not. It doesn't take too, too much. Um, but it will consume a decent amount. Okay. Steel is made the same way, all the same patterns, except with uh, steel replacing. And you can do one other unique thing with these, is that you can color every single one of these blocks. Now, I've colored... Um, an iron tank wall, but you can color the gauges and everything else by simply placing um, the die of your choice in the middle, surrounded by uh, the wall gauge or valve, and it will change the color. Um, when you break the block, and if it's if it's a different color, and you break the block with a pick, um, as far as I know, they have not fixed it. It will default back to um, the the regular color, which is white, and that will create a huge headache. So be really careful if you go ahead and do that with. Uh, these wacky tanks here. Um, and let's just cover this right now. Um, you can use all different colors for one tank. It really doesn't matter. This one is horrifically ugly. Um, this one looks a lot better. Little Minecrafter thing. I got the uh, the valve covered, colored in uh, cyan there. Valve up here, cyan. I got the um, outside walls iron. They're black. And I have the, the gauges as cyan as well. So you could actually make your uh, your tanks look pretty cool. Okay, so that's just a little thing you don't really need to know. Now, building the tank. Um, I'm going to build one real quick just to show you how, how it's uh, done. Basically, it, it's fairly easy. You can make the base one of four sizes, either 3x3 three three being the smallest, 5x5, five 7x7, five, seven seven, or 9x9 nine nine being the largest. And you can make the height anywhere from four blocks high to eight blocks high. And you can uh, use four, five, six, seven, eight high on any of the base variations on the top to make some really wacky looking tanks. Um, as you can see here, this is a really tall iron tank that's using that's filled with lava. This is the smallest um, tank that you can make, and that's a 3x3 three three and 4 high. Um, typically, I put a valve in the bottom, surround it by uh, 8 of these. I'm going to go ahead and put some windows in here. Now, keep in mind, you don't need to put windows, but uh, everyone likes to see what uh, kind of juices they got flowing. Well, at least I do anyway. So there we go. Once you uh, complete the structure, and I just need to put a gauge on top, or a valve on top, um, you can see that the windows kind of come together, and it becomes a multi-block tank. And here you have it. Um, this can hold 576,000 
millibuckets of some sort of fluid. Okay, so you have the walls, the gauges, and the valves. Now, um, inside of here you can uh, put some water cans, whatever kind of uh, water or liquid um, device that you have, and it will take this and it will empty it out into your uh, tank. Bear in mind that you're going to lose your can, um, so be careful uh, when you do this, but it's going to fill up. You can see some inside of there, and you can actually kind of see a graphic of it going in. No, you can't. It has to go through the gauge. Okay, but there you go. That's your uh, that's your standard, tiny, minimum-sized railcraft tank. Let me just change the day here. All right, a few other neat things to note about these blocks. Um, they are fairly straightforward. Um, the outside frame must be made of all tank walls, so you can't make the whole thing all glass. Um, as much as uh, we probably all want to do that, at least to the middle anyway, it cannot be done. Um, tanks can only be fully drained if an exit valve is placed on one of the bottom two layers. So I would have to either place a valve here or here or on one of these two layers in order to properly drain this entire tank. If I were to place a valve on top here and try to drain fluid out of it, I would never be able to drain the full amount from the tank. And it just has to be in the bottom. And that basically uh, jives with real life. That makes sense. No big deal. Nobody's going to lose sleep over that one. Um, you can fill um, or empty your cans out into the tanks by right clicking on the tank. So if I go ahead and grab an empty can here, I can right click on there and it's going to give me a bunch of juice and I can alternatively right click and empty my juice out if uh, I wasn't in creative. There we go. Empty that right out and put it back into your tank. So um, you can do that one of two ways. Um, this is the max size iron tank right here and you can see this holds 10 0.368 million millibuckets of fruit juice, so that is a lot of uh, a lot of juice inside of there. Um, and you're going to see why that this size tank is not really practical to make in. Well, Shammy would disagree. Anyways, all right, what else do we have to go over here? That's not too much else. Oh, stacking. Stacking's a, an interesting little thing. Let's go ahead and grab some poison here. Do, 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 do. Let's grab some poison void capsules. Okay, this is something uh, unique that maybe you didn't know that you could do. Um, you can stack tanks on top of each other. So here is a basic iron tank that can hold 30 or uh, 576,000 millibuckets. Okay, and here is an iron or a steel tank in comparison, same size. It's going to be able to hold double 1.152 um, million. So you can see that uh, the steel tanks are going to drastically in increase the uh, amount of fluids that you can take. And if I made a steel one out of this, um, it would be over 20 million fluid held. Um, but if you put the valves back to back, so I have a valve here on the bottom, and I also have a valve there, so they're touching each other. And if I go ahead and put some uh, poison on top here, you're going to see that it's immediately emptying out. And that's just because it's coming down through here. And uh, it's being transferred to the tank below it. So it's filling up this one first. And once this smaller iron tank is full, this one's going to start filling up and gaining liquid. Now, I'm not sure exactly why you would want to do that, but uh, it could be a way to regulate fluids um, and check your levels with uh, all sorts of things. I have no idea. Uh, but that's just something neat that you can do. Um, let's talk about resizing or reconstructing um, your tank because if you start out with a little tank and you want to make it bigger and you say oh crap you know I don't want to lose all my my stuff in here because it's really valuable instead of piping it out to a different tank and then piping it back in um, you can break these and rebuild them um, as long as you don't touch that center middle block um, I think if you do enough damage to that structure as a whole um, and mess with the four outer corners as well um, it, it'll work just like this that's not really a problem even two of them should be okay um, but if you do a lot of structural damage to your tank, you are going to lose your fluid, especially if you remove that middle, um, that center block, because that's where Minecraft kind of keeps track of, of what's inside of your tank. But say I have a, uh, a tank like this. I want to resize it. I want to make it a, a little bit bigger. Not a problem, okay? Watch this. I'm going to remove all of these, these middle parts here. I'm going to extend the entire bottom of the tank and go from a 3x3 three three pattern to a 5x5 five five pattern, keeping in mind that I need to uh, make sure all of the framework or the outside edges of the multi-block are all made out of walls and not any other, no gauges, no, uh, no valves. I'm going to throw some windows in here. Okay, go around the side. 
and what we're going to have here is we're going to have a larger tank with the same amount of water in it. So it's going to be able to hold a lot more, 1.6 million, yet it's going to retain the same amount of water that it had in the smaller tank. And you can go ahead and make this higher. I can go ahead and go all the way up to 8. I can expand it to the full um, 9 by 9. I can go 7 by 7. Um, whatever you choose, these um, are meant to uh, be made to be modified and so on and so forth. Okay. That's basically it for the Railcraft tanks. Oh, let me just, let me just, you gotta get liquid in here, I guess. So that's something important. Um, I have a valve here attached to some liquid duct, and this is just an ender tank with some water in it. And uh, if I turn that on, the water's just gonna drain down and come right into here, and it's gonna fill it up. And you can use waterproof pipes, um, Buildcraft pipes, liquid ducts, whatever kind of uh, pipe that you, um, that you have. You can, I think, attach an aqueous accumulator directly to the valve. Uh, but, just uh, pump the liquids in through the top layers of your tanks, and you can pump them out in the same fashion through the bottom um, with any, again, any kind of uh, liquid. You can put an ender tank directly on top of the gauge or the um, the valve and drain it out that way. You don't even need this liquid duct. Um, tesseracts are kind of finicky. You might not be able to put a tesseract directly on top of it, so uh, mind that if you go ahead and try a tesseract. Um, they are very useful, though. Okay, uh, I believe that's it for steel tanks. I think I covered everything. We colored some of ours. We made some iron tanks. We made some steel tanks. Um, you can store just about any liquid in the game inside of these tanks, including um, steam. And I don't think, oh, these are not empty, so I'm going to go ahead and put some steam in here, okay? So you can fill these tanks up with steam and store steam um, for later on, but these are going to be really useful. Put your creosote oil in here, put your fuel in here, put your oil in here, put your lava in these, in these babies and uh, store all of the liquids. Okay, so that's the rolling machine. That's the Railcraft multi-block tanks, both iron and steel. And uh, next, I think we're going to start to get into the real power of this mod, and that is the high and low pressure boilers and the solid and uh, liquid boilers. Thank you for watching. Again, this is a tutorial brought to you by the Minecrafters. Make sure you check out our social media outlets listed here. And as always, stay poised.